This is the South Central Texas Fall 2019 Seasonal Outlook. Today's date is Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. My name is Brett Williams. I am the Climate Focal Point here at the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Austin, San Antonio. Let's go ahead and get started. So first, a little uh, brief overview or outline of this presentation um, and the points that we will cover in it. Uh, hurricane season is waning. Uh, with South Central Texas avoiding any impacts in 2019. Uh, so, you know, don't really anticipate much else in terms of hurricane season for the rest of the season. Um, for us, that's good news there. Exceptionally hot and dry August and September has created major drought problems across the region. And fire weather is a concern this fall due to the recent period of hot and dry weather. And as we begin to receive cold fronts, bringing in gusty winds and low humidities. And then uh, as far as El Nino and La Nina are concerned, we are currently in so neutral. Uh, this uh, came about just a few months ago. We were in a weak El Nino. We are now El Nino uh, neutral. And this is uh, expected to persist at least through the fall months and even possibly beyond that. So first, before we jump into the fall outlook, let's kind of look at uh, the past couple of months here because they have been pretty historic. Uh, this is August, uh, August temperatures and rainfall, and at our four major climate sites, San Antonio, uh, Austin, Camp Mabry, as well as Bergstrom, then Del Rio, uh, we were very, very hot. Uh, second hottest August on record at San Antonio and Camp Mabry, the hottest August on record at Del Rio, and the seventh hottest August on record at Bergstrom. Uh, here's a map showing you pretty much the entire region was well, well above average in terms of temperatures in August. Um, instantly enough, it was uh, one of the hottest months of all time, uh, second hottest month of all time at Mabry behind August of 2011, third hottest month of all time at San Antonio, and the second hottest month of all time at Del Rio behind July 90, 1998. And uh, instantly enough, this was the first month ever on record at Del Rio in which every single day of the month reached a high temperature of 100 degrees or more. And as far as uh, rainfall goes, it was pretty dry everywhere. Um, and here's a map showing that yeah, most of the region was indeed uh, anywhere from uh, below average to much below average in terms of rainfall in the month of August. So hot and dry in August, and the problem is it didn't really change at all. In fact, it uh, kind of even got worse as we got into September. Uh, so again, all four of our, our, of our uh, official major climate sites uh, received their hottest Septembers on record. And pretty much everywhere else, too, uh, a lot of our other sites around the region um, also registered their hottest Septembers on record. So it was uh, it was one for the record books. And again, the, the dry conditions continued as well with uh, pretty much all the region seeing below to much below average rainfall in the month of September. So really hot and dry August and September. And actually, the, the dry uh, conditions even began as far back as July. So uh, things have been pretty rough here recently on that end. So as we look ahead to fall 2019, uh, on the right here, uh, these green bars show you the uh, normal precipitation by month, and then these uh, lines indicate the uh, the average temperature, so the average high, the average mean, and the average minimum temperatures at our three main climate sites across the region. And then uh, severe weather reports and flash flood reports uh, distributed by month. So you can see that uh, severe weather is relatively rare during the fall. Uh, we do have a, maybe a very slight secondary peak, um, but nowhere near what we see in the spring months. Uh, but flash flooding definitely does see a little bit of a secondary peak uh, in the fall, especially here in, in October. Um, and that's because October tends to be one of the wetter months of the year across the region. Um, the good news is, though, is you know as we get into October, uh, we typically start to begin experiencing those pleasant temperatures. Um, you know, finally getting some relief from the summer heat. Of course, uh, we have necessarily had that much this year. The first uh, week or so of October has been again uh, very, very hot. Uh, we finally got a cold front a few days ago that helped things out, uh, but we're hot again today and tomorrow, and uh, we'll get another cold front uh, on. Uh, Friday morning, and that should get us back down toward toward uh, normal. So, the good news is though is that we are you know heading into fall. We are in the fall, um, getting into mid October now. So temperatures will be on the decrease. So that is good news for those who are tired of the uh, extreme heat that we've been experiencing. So let's look at the percent of normal rainfall as of October 9th. Uh, I have it broken up by 30 day, 60 day. 90 day bottom left and 180 day on the bottom right and you can see that pretty much everywhere across the region have been below normal for the rainfall over the last 30 60 and 90 days 
uh, with many locations being well below normal. You can see these kind of these dark reds showing where we've been uh, extremely below normal. And the effects of the wet spring that we had in, in the wet June um, are still showing up some in the 180 day, uh, but these are starting to fade. Um, so you can see that most of the region is still below normal for precip even in the 180 day period except for a few pockets um, that you can see here in the, in the greens across the region. Um, and then uh, some locations over this 180 day period have been very, very dry, including portions of the Rio Grande Plains, where uh, you're about to see where we currently have our most extreme drought conditions. So the drought outlook, uh, drought continues to plague South Central Texas. Uh, so this was the drought monitor from August 8th, and you can see pretty large region of, of D0, which is considered just abnormally dry, not technically drought conditions at that point. Only 5% was in moderate drought here across the Rio Grande Plains. But uh, not even two months later now, this is from uh, last week, uh, October the 3rd, and you can see that the entire region, 100%, is at least abnormally dry, D0. Uh, with 39% in moderate drought, which is D1, and then 38% uh, in severe drought, which is D2, with even 19% in extreme drought, this uh, this darker red here. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we've, we've had drought conditions uh, developing and intensifying across the region. So right now, 96% of the region is in drought conditions, anywhere from D1 to D3. And the bad news is that the Climate Prediction Center does not anticipate these drought conditions, uh, conditions ending uh, any time over the next few months. Basically, they continue these drought conditions through the end of 2019. So it looks like these drought conditions are going to stick around. If we do happen to get some you know, major rainfall events across the region, it should help out. Uh, it would take a lot to completely wipe out the drought at this point, especially where we've had the extreme drought. Um, but uh, you know, we do expect this drought, these drought conditions to continue. So let's look ahead at the fall temperature outlook. This is the CFS model, the Climate Forecast System model. And it's a mid to long range model that we can kind of look at to see, just kind of get a feel for what we might be seeing um, kind of in the more longer term. This is for October, November, December of this year. And these are the um, surface temperature anomalies. And you can see that they suggest, or this model suggests, uh, warmer than normal temperatures continuing through the fall. And now moving on to rainfall, again, this is the same model. And it generally shows, you know, not a whole lot in terms of, of strongly, you know, tilting one way or the other in terms of above or below normal rainfall. It does show a little slight area here kind of across the eastern portions of the region uh, where they tilt toward maybe below normal rainfall uh, for this fall, but not a whole lot to draw from there. So let's take a look at the Climate Prediction Center uh, more short-term outlooks, the 6 to 10 day on the top and the 8 to 14 day uh, for temperatures and precip. And you can see that uh, we have a fairly high probability of above normal temperatures between October 14th and the 22nd. So as we get into mid to even late October, we're still probably seeing those above normal temperatures uh, sticking around. And then on the rainfall side, uh, there's a slight probability toward above normal rainfall between October 16th and 22nd. Um, so We'll have to see if this comes to fruition. Hopefully it does because we need the rainfall, but uh, uh, only a slight tilt. We don't see these really high probabilities towards you know, the 80s or 90s. It's about a 40%. Taking a look at the Climate Prediction Center, October temperatures and rainfall outlook. Uh, this is released on the 30th of September, so it's about 10 days old at this point. But uh, they show um, pretty strong favorability or probability toward above normal temperatures for us here in South Central Texas this October. And then for precip, they predict uh, even chances for above or below normal rainfall in October. So not really a strong signal either way on the precipitation or rainfall front. And now looking at the fall, so this is for October, November, and December. Again, this is released uh, on the 19th of September, so it's a few weeks old now. So I might be slightly out of date, but uh, this is what they showed back then. And they show a moderate probability of above normal temperatures in October, November, December, so the winter, or the, sorry, the fall months across South Central Texas. And for rainfall, again, continuing that trend for October, it, it shows even chances for above or below, for above or below normal rainfall in the fall. So taking a look at the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO outlook, uh, again, we currently have El Nino Southern Oscillation neutral conditions present, so we are not in El Nino, we are not in La Nina. 
And uh, Enso Neutral is most likely to continue through the fall, about a 75% chance, and may even continue all the way through spring of 2020, uh, which they give about a 55 to 60% chance. So you can see here the odds uh, for El Nino Neutral in the gray. Uh, red is uh, odds for El Nino, and then the blue is the odds for La Nina. And you can see that overall we see, uh, you know, trending toward neutral over the long term and then uh, beyond that maybe in El Nino and that kind of goes along with what the uh, model prediction show um, here's all the different uh, ensembles that are used and you can see most of them keep us in uh, an ENSO neutral over the uh, next uh, few to several months so the tropical outlook uh, again we are still in uh, hurricane season uh, we peaked back in September typically early to mid September is the peak uh, so now that we're in you know kind of getting the early to mid October we're on the way down um, and it's currently pretty quiet across the Atlantic Basin at least in the Caribbean or wherever we might expect things that might impact us um, and again hurricane season is on the wane and then this uh, little graphic here shows that uh, October hurricanes or tropical storms are pretty rare in October uh, much more common back in uh, June July August and September and so 2019 hurricane season in review, uh, there were no hurricanes or tropical storms that impacted us here in South Central Texas. Uh, of course, uh, tropical storm Imelda caused significant flooding impacts for the Houston to Beaumont area um, to our east-southeast. Uh, but for us, it basically just made us even more hot and dry. We didn't get really anything out of that. So moving ahead now to the fall fire weather outlook. Um, again, we have significant drought conditions across the region. Fuels and soils continue to dry and cure. And then there's this uh, drought index here called the Keech Byram Drought Index, which is a measurement of moisture deficiency. And you can see that across our region here in South Central Texas, it is very, very high, pretty much at the top of the charts. So just going to show you how dry we are out there right now. Our soils and our fuels are very, very dry. And then the energy release components are well above normal for this time of year, and they're actually trending very close to the maximum observed ERCs. Um, so I've got our three regions here, Rio Grande Plains, Hill Country, and Central Texas. Um, and you can see that uh, this little black line here, we're well above normal, which is this little lighter gray line. And then like I said, trending toward maximum, which is this red line here. Um, so these uh, energy release components are quite elevated for this time of year. And wildland fire potential is already elevated, and it's expected to continue to stay elevated as long as these dry conditions continue. And with fall upon us now, as we start getting these cold fronts to the region with more regularity, uh, these cold fronts are going to probably bring gusty winds and maybe some low humidity values behind it as the, you know, the colder, drier air from uh, Canada filters into the region. And this will pose a threat for enhancing fire potential as, of course, anytime you get uh, increase in winds and low humidities, that always increases your fire potential. So kind of wrapping things up now, I know this was a pretty quick outlook. There isn't a whole lot going on right now to speak of outside of just the, the hot, the dry, the drought, and possibility of, of increased fire weather concerns. Uh, so the big things, you know, the heavy rain, the flash flooding, the river flooding, uh, we're expecting below normal impacts this fall. Again, due to these antecedent drought conditions and really no expectation of what are the normal conditions this fall, um, especially the river flooding, you know, it, it would take a lot of, of heavy rainfall to really get us river flooding issues, a little bit less so to get us to the flash flooding. Um, but of course, this is South Central Texas, and a lot of times we do uh, typically go from uh, drought conditions to flash flooding conditions. So, you know, I can't rule out, you know, a major event this fall that might dump a lot of rainfall in a short period of time and cause issues. But on the whole, uh, it looks like uh, we should be expecting below normal impacts to, uh, for uh, heavy rain and flooding. On the flip side of that, fire weather, we're expecting above normal impacts from wildland fires. Again, due to the antecedent drought conditions, the expectation that these drought conditions are going to continue, and then those near maximum energy release components. So we're pretty well primed right now for, uh, for wildland fires, um, so that's something we'll have to keep an eye on this fall. And then tropical weather, decided to throw that in there, even though we're uh, getting toward the end of hurricane season, uh, yeah, inspecting near to slightly below normal impacts. Um, of course, even normal impacts for this time of year would be fairly minor. Um, so, you know, again, it's rare to get October hurricanes or tropical storms here in Texas. And uh, overall, it's been pretty quiet for us here across South Central Texas in regards to the hurricane season. So that'll just about do it. Uh, wrap it up here. Uh, if you have any questions, you are welcome to contact us at our public line here. 
you can reach out to me at my email address there, and you can always find the latest and greatest forecast information at weather.gov slash Austin or weather.gov slash San Antonio.